There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean, the Book Maniac. Welcome back to Victober. Victober is coming soon, and it's my favorite time of the year. This is my TBR video. I'm filming it before any announcement videos have gone out. At least I haven't seen any. I don't know who's the organizers. I don't think Ange of Beyond the Pages is involved because she's very busy with life stuff. In years past, the other three organizers were Kate Howe, Katie of Books and Things, and Lucy the Reader. I'm pretty sure that Kate and Katie are still involved, but I don't know about the other person. So if the announcement videos go up between the time that I'm recording this video and publishing it, I will add that information to the show notes. So I don't know about prompts, and I wasn't planning to follow any prompts this year. I have a great TBR of uh, books that I'm dying to read, and books that have kind of fallen off TBRs of past years. So in no particular order, I am planning to read Mrs. Humphrey Ward's novel, Halbeck of Bannisdale. <laughs> 1898 novel, Mrs. Humphrey Ward. Uh, what a terrible appellation to have to go by. Her name was Mary Augusta Arnold, born in Tasmania. Was she born in Australia? Oh, I didn't know anything about her life. Let, let's check. Yeah, Mary Augusta Ward. I don't know why she's called Mrs. Humphrey Ward. That's just so demeaning, I think. But that was her nom de plume. She was born in Tasmania, Australia. I didn't know. In 1851, died in London in 1920. She was a member of the Oh. She was the founding president of the Women's National Anti-Suffrage League. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get along with her writing if she didn't like suffragism. So, 1898. I've looked at this book when I hauled it. I bought it at a used bookstore in Saskatchewan about a year ago. It's very religiously preoccupied, again, unless it's attached to vividly realized characters that sounds like a turnoff the protagonist is a young woman whose catholic lover requires her to accept the role his traditions impose upon women if it's a feisty protagonist that is rebellious that sounds great but the fact that it was written by a woman who went on to found the anti-suffragette association i don't have high hopes for this one so this one i'm gonna try it but We'll see how it goes. And I'm going to mix things up a bit because I find the Victober parameters quite limiting. So I am going to read a biography of Queen Victoria written in the 1920s or 30s by Lytton Strachey. Written in 1921, dedicated to Virginia Woolf. So I have been fascinated by Queen Victoria since I was knee-high to a princess, to a grasshopper, and... This will be maybe the fifth biography of Queen Victoria I've ever read, but this is like the classic one. I don't think it's authoritative anymore. I'm assuming that more recent biographies have had access to material that Mr. Strachey did not, but it's something that I have always wanted to read, and look at that cover. That's John Brown and Mrs. Brown. Looking forward to finally getting to this for Victober. I mean, Victober, Queen Victoria, it fits perfectly, don't you think? I am going to read an Elizabeth Gaskell novel, Cranford. It was published in this twofer, and I hate twofer books. Publish the books separately, for God's sakes. So I, I will read Cousin Phyllis someday, but not for this year's Victober. Because I don't want to read two Elizabeth Gaskell novels in one month, or even in one longer time period. But when I read, get around to reading Cousin Phyllis, the second novel in this book, it will count as a separate book. Darn tootin'! Cranford is supposed to be one of her best. I have read, as part of it, the Victober Read Along two years ago, I read Wives and Daughters, which I loved. And I quite liked her other famous one, North and South. So this will be my third, and it's supposed to perhaps be one of her best. And this chunky bugger, George Eliot's Felix Holt the Radical. Not including footnotes or appendices, it's about almost 500 pages. So this will be the tome that I tackle. Maybe this is one of the very few that I have not read. 1866. So that one was kind of in the middle of her literary output, and it is about Felix Holt, who was a radical. So the heroine, Esther, has to choose between a man who has returned to his hometown to claim his inheritance, and another man who 
is a radical politician in the wake of the 1832 Reform Act. So very political. I think in George Eliot's hands, the politics will be interesting. In Anthony Trollope's, it often is a big snooze fest. But also, I'm not always in love with George Eliot. I loved Adam Bede. I liked Middlemarch. I could have done without Silas Marner. And Daniel Deronda, I found an intellectually rewarding book and with a certain emotional component to it as well. But yeah, I'd, George Eliot is not always great. So we'll see if this is one of the great ones that I've missed. And I needed some gay content for Victober this year, so I found out that this book would qualify. Sins of the Cities of the Plain. And look at that cover. It was published in 1881 by Jack Saul. And I don't think, I'm pretty sure that was a pseudonym. And it is about a homosexual brothel in London. So that sounds fabulous. Two more that I'm going to be doing on ebook. One is Red Pottage by Mary Chalman Chalmundley. I always forget how to pronounce her name. Chumley. Chumley. Okay, the, I found two that pronounce it Chumley, but here's the spelling. It sounds like it should be Chalmundley. Red Pottage. Uh, I can't remember why I wanted to read this. Let's see. Another 1899 novel. Two friends, Rachel and Hester. Rachel's wealthy. Hester is a novelist who lives with her judgmental brother, a vicar. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. I mean, it caused a scandal when it was first pu published in 1899 because of its theme of adultery. There's lots of Victorian literature well before this that... Oh, and another theme, the emancipation of women and its satire of the clergy. So that sounds right up my alley. And Mary Chumley, born 1859, died 1925. Made into a silent movie in 1918. Yeah, I'm really curious about that one. I think it's pretty chunky too, so that will probably be a long-term read. And I figure it's finally time for somebody who loves the 19th century novel and has read 19th century novels for study and for pleasure for many years. It's finally time to read... Thackeray's Vanity Fair. I've never read it. Published 1847, 1848, serially. The main protagonist, as far as I have always understood, is Becky Sharp, but Amelia Sedley is another main character, and it's set during and after the Napoleonic Wars. It's a chunkster. I'm looking forward to finally getting to it. I'm famous for bailing, so it's quite possible, for example, that the Mrs. Humphrey Ward novel will be an early bail, so I have a backup. And again, I'm going outside the confines of what Victober usually permits. I want to read the canonical Australian novel, Miles Franklin's 1901 novel, My Brilliant Career. I have it on script. It fits within the Victorian era and is a territory of Britain at that time. So I'm going to try to get to that if I bail on one or two of these. So that all sounds fabulous. Did you want me to read the... The Gay Brothel novel aloud to you in a series of videos. Uh, I probably have to charge quite a bit, but it's possible. Thanks for watching. <laughs>